this is John Phillips. I'm with Maximum PC. We're on the floor of Comic-Con. I'm with Brian David Johnson, the consumer experience architect at Intel. And uh, he's going to tell us a little bit about Smart TV. So let's just start out. What is Smart TV? So Smart TV is really a platform and a product description. It's not necessarily a specific product, and it really looks at how you take the best of what people love about TV and the best of what people love about the internet and really combine them together. And it, it can live not only just on a TV, it can be on a TV, it could be on a set-top box, a Blu-ray player. It's really a, a concept that can move across all of those platforms. Okay. So one of the things uh, that everyone out there needs to know is that Brian spent about 10 years uh, studying the ethnography of how people use TVs. It led to a book which we could talk about. But um, what was your big takeaway from all that research? How did you bring it back to the folks at Intel? And how is that manifest in Smart TV? Sure. So what we did is we had ethnographers and we sent out them out to people's homes all over the world. And they brought back, and I say that when we would ask people what they loved about TV, the top three things that they said, number one, they love TV. Number two, they love the TV that they missed. And number three, they love the TV that their friends told them about. So what I brought back is when we design for smart TV, we need to understand, we need to let the TV be the TV. We're not trying to turn the TV into a PC. We're trying to bring the best of the internet and the best of computing and combine that in a meaningful way onto the television. And really kind of make this enhanced, more intelligent, sort of more social experience on the television. So the social side of it, tell me a little bit about that. Uh, how do, what, did, what do they want from a social experience from their TV? And how do you think that's gonna be manifest as more and more third parties develop for the smart TV platform? Well, one of the things that we always remember is that television has always been social. So even way back when television started, people watched it in bars and pubs. And then when you brought it home, you had the living room. Everybody sat around the TV and watched the TV. So inherently, television really is a social experience. So what we're trying to do is use technology to bring that back. And so what, some of the things that we're seeing is people love to use the television as a way to connect with their friends and family. They love to be able to, maybe they'll, they'll sort of get onto Twitter, maybe they'll use different social networking applications, and they really like it when it's tied to TV shows. And then also as we start moving forward, we're starting to see things that people really enjoy having video. And not just one video, not just a single video phone, but multiple pieces of video so that you could watch the Super Bowl with all of your friends at all of their different Super Bowl parties and they could be in the same city or they could be all around the world. And so is this happening in a video window? Is it sharing an audio stream with each other? Can you get a little bit more specific? Well, I mean, what we're being able to do, especially on our platform, is being able to do overlays. So being able to have HD video and have internet overlays on top of it. So it's allowing for the people who are going to build those platforms. So as you said, the third party developers to come in and really have that capability. Because that's really what our research was about, what my book's about, is creating the capabilities on Intel's platforms to deliver these really engaging experiences to the consumers. But ultimately, it's going to be those third parties who build those. So we want to make sure that our platforms have those capabilities. And for third parties, we know that Logitech is going to be one of the first out there with a box and Sony's going to have some products. Um, but let's get back to the book for a second. What was sort of the strangest thing you learned about TV use from all that research? Probably one of the pieces of history that I learned. When I was saying before that television was very, very social. And it's always been social, and it started in bars, which I found very fun. And I was you know, thinking around World Cup and things like that, that everybody was going to the bars. But there was actually one bar in Hoboken that used to, way back in the early days, kick everybody out between four and five o'clock so that the kids could come in and watch Howdy Doody. <laughs> so they were actually making it social for parents and for kids when it was in the was in the bar. What do people hate most about their TV experience? So when we go and talk to people about their TVs and if the first thing that they always say they want to change is the remote control. Everybody feels like the remote controls are too complicated and that they have too many of them. And so what people really want is to kind of combine it and get it all into one. And we know there are certain products out there that do that, but it's always this anxiety that people seem to have. But it became a bar for me when we would go talk to people about how they would bring in a new device. If a device was interesting enough and kind of cool enough that they would actually bring in a new uh, remote control, you could see that okay, that was really neat, and that was something that they wanted because even though they complained that they had too many remotes, if they're getting a really good experience, they'll bring in that new remote. So the remote for smart TV products, 
Is it going to be, are we going to see it, is everything happening with a D-pad on a traditional remote? Is a keyboard integrated? How do I actually get the data past just small, you know, yes, no, uh, you know, entry points? How are we going to get that onto the screen? I think each of the different platforms are going to have different remote controls. I believe the Logitech remote control has a, a keyboard on it. And I think with some of the different Google platforms, you might begin to see voice. I think one of the things that was interesting, because of Google TV being developed on that, that platform, they can have voice on your phone and then that connected to search on the TV. So I think because of the platform is open, you're going to see lots of new ways that people are interacting with the platform. Okay, so when is all this going to be available? So they've had some product announcements coming out, so we're really looking at later this year and the beginning of next year. So this has been Brian David Johnson and John Phillips on the floor at Comic-Con, and uh, we're going to watch some TV now. <laughs>